the Taxpayers' Alliance has called for BBC licence fees to be scrapped and the government-owned Channel 4 to be sold off just days before the budget's announced tomorrow. Well, the group says it seems unnecessary to have two publicly-owned broadcasters, stating that neither channel fits into the 21st century broadcasting market in their current forms, with streaming services being the preferred method of consuming content. Well, to explain more, Darwin Friend, who's policy analyst at the Taxpayers Alliance and uh, joins us now. Um, so what, 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 what are you suggesting? A scrapping of Channel 4 and the BBC and just letting them get on with it in, in a commercial world? Uh, well, thank you very much for having me on the show this morning, firstly. Um, so what we're calling for in this report that we've released today is for Channel 4 to be privatised, so not scrapping it, just privatising it, and then also for the licence fee to be abolished and much of the BBC to be uh, privatised after that. And the reason we're calling for that is because we have now got a far more diverse media market. And so with the rise of streaming services, with obviously new broadcasters such as yourselves entering the market as well, I don't think it's right anymore for us to have two publicly owned broadcasters. And so I think what the Chancellor should do when he stands up at the dispatch box tomorrow is actually start the process of changing the funding models for these um, two broadcasters and in doing so that will not only benefit the public and taxpayers but I think it will also benefit those broadcasters themselves because it will make them more competitive. I was just going to say, how will it affect those? I mean, will it not possibly affect the quality of content, do you think? Well, we, what we saw in, a 24, uh, in the early 2010s is uh, Channel 5 was purchased by Viacom. And um, one of the concerns about that was, obviously, it's got its TV licence and that means it has to produce certain types of content. Mm. But actually, after it was sold to Viacom, its licence actually meant it produced more public service content and also they volunteered to invest more in the UK broadcasting industry. Mm. So actually quite the reverse of seeing the content and the UK investment actually go down, we saw it go up. And so I see no reason why that would change with Channel 4 or the BBC. So much time has been spent looking at alternative uh, ways to finance the BBC. Common Select Committee this last March looked into this and said, frankly, there was no viable alternative that they could see coming into force before 20. 38. The subscription model, which everybody talks about, but how is that going to work? And, and let's face it, people are paying more in a year for subscriptions to, say, Sky or Netflix uh, and getting uh, far less in terms of television and radio than they get from a BBC subscription. It works, doesn't it, as a model? Well, I think it did when it first came into, into being. So in the 1940s, the BBC was quite literally the only show in town. And so I think it was quite right at that point in time to pay a fee, essentially a subscription, really, in return for access to BBC content. But obviously, our, our media market has changed hugely since then. Technology has advanced. So there would be other options for, as we call it, for a part privatised BBC. So the bit that would no longer be in the public sector to actually go down well, a different we, Which path. bits should be and which bits shouldn't be? How would you work this? Well, what we've done in our paper is suggest that essentially quite often in the news market, the news and the culturally focused programming is quite often the least profitable and that's understandable. And so what we've suggested is that a government grant should be used to continue funding those things in the public sector. And then the commercial side of the BBC would be able to go out and compete in a market as any business does. And that could be and that, that new entity, that new private entity, would be able to decide how it wanted to be funded. It could go along the similar lines to GB News or ITV, where it focuses on advertising. It could be through the subscription model. And obviously, you mentioned Netflix and Amazon, all of these new streaming services. I think the current licence fee is £159. That's more than an Amazon Prime and a Netflix subscription combined for a year. And if you did what we recommend in the report and sell off part of the BBC, that could fund a £300 increase in the tax-free personal allowance, which is the amount you're allowed to earn before you start paying tax. Now, that's enough for a Disney, an Amazon and a Netflix subscription with more, on, more to go. And so I think there are plenty of options for the BBC to look at, and I think our paper suggests those uh, quite clearly. And, and how confident are you that th this will happen, that you'll be able to get this to work? I mean, there has been a lot of discussion, especially regarding yeah. Channel 4 recently, about its privatisation. So I do really hope that um, the Chancellor does make an announcement um, tomorrow. But especially with the BBC, we've got its licence uh, mid or charter midterm review is coming up in 2023. There can't really be any changes necessarily to the licence fee until 2027. But I think the government should start early and start getting this train in motion, really, so that then when the charter renewal does come round, then the changes that we've recommended on, in our paper can be enacted. Mm. I always find it funny, interesting that we, 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 I, I always equate the NHS with the BBC and that it's something we in this country 
who are paying for it are very happy to criticise it. If we go abroad and a foreigner has a go at the NHS or the BBC, we defend it mm. very, very vehemently. Do you, if you're abroad, do you defend the BBC and what it stands for, or, or do you think it, it, its its model is done? Well, I think I think the financing model is, um, as, as we recommend in the paper, it, it needs to change. But I certainly, I mean, I watch uh, TV across a range of broadcasters, GB News, the BBC, and so that's why I have called in this paper for it to some of it to remain in the public sector because I do think that is an important part of uh, it's an important British institution but I do think it now needs to change and we wouldn't be the first country to change our public service our main public service broadcasters funding model Australia changed its um, license fee in the 1970s to a government grant and so I think that would be a good example for us in the UK to follow with the BBC. Mm. Okay. How much do you pay for a Sky subscription a year? Do you know? Uh, I, I don't have a Sky subscription, oh. I'm afraid. So uh, I, I have a Netflix and uh, Amazon Prime, but I don't have Sky, unfortunately. And, and you watch the BBC, presumably? I do watch the BBC, yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's good to see you. Thank uh, you. We will be talking about this again, I have no doubt at all. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much yeah, for your time. Yeah, friend, policy analyst at the Taxpayers Alliance.